and love him. Can we do it again? Hallelujah. away the sins of the world. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Just taste it. He is good this morning. Oh, he is good. His mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. His mercy. He's here this morning in mercy. He's here this morning to lift you. He's here to do a work. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Righteous King, mighty God, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, bright and morning star. Oh, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. We are crafted into that vine this morning. Hallelujah. We are crafted into the vine. That's why we give ourselves away this morning. That's why we surrender this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, sweet Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, that was more like it, wasn't it? Yeah. Indeed. Brother Ralph, would you ask the Lord to bless the message this morning? Father, we thank you for this morning, God. We thank you for the adoration of the song that we have sang. We ask for God that you are able to bring forth your word to your pastor. Father, we ask the Lord to bless someone that is in need. Yes, Lord. Father, we ask the Lord to bless every soul that is here. In the name of the Lord, we pray. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I want to talk to you today for a little bit about the day Jesus got mad. Is that all right? You know, as a kid, I used to read this and say, why in the world would he put that in the Bible? Why in the world is that there? I don't understand because, you know, even as a kid, I hate a temper. I hate when somebody's hip is all out of joint. They're mad. They're hurting. They're hurting everybody around them. Why in the world is that there? But there's a reason that the Lord speaks to us. When I picture the Lord... I picture the good shepherd. Sometimes I picture the wood of the manger and how that wood would become cradle to cross. And I dwell there. Sometimes I think of the mighty God in Christ. I think of him knowing that people were hungry and there was no McDonald's. A multitude of 5,000 can't go down to Sister Sarah's house and eat. And so the Bible tells me he was moved with compassion and with the loaves and the fishes of one little boy's lunch. He fed the multitude. Amen. He turned the water into wine. There are so many wonderful pieces that you and I can dwell on today. But I chose to dwell on the day that he got mad. If you would turn with me, if you have your Bibles, I want to go to Mark chapter 11, verses 15 through 18. Again, that's Mark 11, verses 15 through 18. That's the second book in the New Testament, just in case you were wondering. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any 
vessel through the temple. And he taught. Everybody say, and he taught. And he, taught. he is a great teacher. Amen. Saying unto them, is it not written, my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. Amen. The house of prayer. Amen. Not the lo local sacrifice <laughs> store. The house of prayer. Hallelujah. Not the house of music. Although I believe in all of that. Amen. Not the house of the message. But in this particular verse, it is the house of prayer. Amen. And it can be nothing else but the house of prayer. Where is the house of prayer? Church. You're sitting in it. Amen. You're sitting in it this morning. The house of prayer. The Lord is not looking for someone else to do something. He is looking for prayer. I'm sure. Well, Lord, we're doing you a service. We're selling these turtle doves to the poor who can't pay for a bullock for their sins. The Lord didn't see it that way. Because you see, they were making a profit. Go back and read this chapter within context. And you will read how the money changers, they had to change over to the money that was used there. And they weren't allowed to bring money from a different culture or a neighboring place. They had to change their money. And of course, the money changers did what? What did they do? They made money. They made money by changing their money. And this annoyed the Lord. You know, I could go back to an old verse that talks about usury. He doesn't want the money of the church to be used for usury. And this is when we see the Lord angry. And he turns over the tables. This really gets you. Because he takes out a whip. I have no idea where he got it. But he had one. And he was whipping them, telling them, get out! Get out! My house shall be called the house of prayer. Amen. Yes, we worship. Yes, we sing. Yes, we preach. But we also, if we're going to have anything in this church, it's going to come from prayer. Amen. We build each other up in our most holy faith through prayer. I'm all for singing. I love singing. My voice since I started pastoring is terrible, to be honest with you. But I still love it. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Clap your hands, O ye lands. I am not saying stop praising. I'm not saying stop preaching. But I am saying this morning to start praying. This is something that we lack. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, is it not written, my house will be called the house of prayer for all nations. But you have made it a den of robbers. You know, even back in the Old Testament, do you remember the day they celebrated the Jubilee? And people that were enslaved went home. They had served their time no matter when they became a slave. They went back. Land was returned to the rightful owner. If your child was sold into slavery because you couldn't pay your debts, that child got to come home. That's the kind of God we serve today. Amen. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him. For they feared him because the whole crowd 
was amazed at his teaching. That crowd that morning had to hear something that they were amazed. I don't know what all he had to say. We only have what was written. But he touched their lives with his words. They were stunned. The master's cleaning house. The master's cleaning house. No one's going to go up against him. No one's going to argue with him because he's the master. Sometimes God will come into your soul and he will start throwing things away as you let them go. But you see, you have to be willing to let them go. When we do that, we become the house of prayer. Amen? Get your business out of here. Get your business out of here. Sometimes the Lord, in his infinite love and mercy, comes into your soul when he knows it needs to be cleaned. And he touches the heart. And next thing you know, you're on your knees and you're crying. And the Lord is drawing you into repentance so that you can pray the prayer of faith. So that you can reach someone else. This house we're sitting in today is the house of prayer. We the people are the house of prayer. What happened to the loving Jesus? He's irate. He's physical. And I'll be the first to say, if I see somebody blowing up, that's so distasteful. Don't they know how to act in public? You know, I have issue with people that cannot control their emotions. We're adults. Amen? And we should be able to control ourselves. But when Jesus comes in and takes over, he hits us at the most inopportune times. Has that ever happened to you? Amen. Pray. But Lord, right now, it's not convenient. But if he says pray, you jolly well better pray. I do not want to be whipped by the almighty king of glory. And he can do that. What made God so irate was the people being taken advantage of. And then his house was being prostituted for purposes other than what it was intended for. What is your house being used for that it was not intended for? Only you can answer that. We answer that for ourselves. We don't answer that for someone else. But what are we being used for? I can see myself, feathers flying, the birds being thrown out of their cages, and off they go. Oh, everybody was upset, but not the people. The people understood Jesus. Do we understand him today? Well, they were just doing their job. Jesus is not terribly impressed with religious commercialism. He's not. Sometimes we get carried away. I am not against raising money for missions. I'm not against supporting the church. I belong to the UPCI. I do. We support it. Church, we do. We send in offerings, don't we, Brother James? Amen. But that doesn't cancel our needing to be a house of prayer. He is concerned not only whether we are doing his work, but how and why we're doing it. How do I handle myself? How do I act? How do I behave? The house of nations, red and yellow, black and white, we are precious in the sight, all of us. I don't care what you are. I don't care if you're a descendant of five generations, pure blood. It doesn't make any difference who you are. Because once he moves in, you are the house of prayer. Amen? Amen. The money 
money changers would have said the same thing. They had to pay the temple tax. Did God intend for people to have to pay taxes to get to go in to the church? I think not. Come as you are. I'm not saying don't pay your tithes and offering. I'm not saying that at all. But if you don't have any, you still come. Amen? Amen. There were special coins that were minted here in Jerusalem. And they caused currency problems. They got involved in preaching the gospel, performing music and Christian materials. They did all kinds of things. But they forgot it's the house of prayer. I'm going to talk to you pretty raw right now. I feel it. We come for dinner. We come to feel the Lord. We come Sunday morning. Here we are. We're here. I'm taking care of my mom, and I so apologize that I'm sometime. It's going to be like this for another month, and then I'll go back to normal. But when it comes to Thursday night and we need to pray and get a hold of God, only you know who you are. Where are you? Are you the house of prayer? Are you? Only you can answer that. But our greatest work together will come when we unite and become the house of prayer. The house of prayer puts one a thousand to flight. Rose and I can put 10,000 to flight. Eileen, come with us. That's 100,000 to, to flight. If we gather together and we seek the Lord and we pray, we can shake the foundation of this city. We can shake the foundation of heaven if we will join and be a house of prayer. I have somewhat against you. You see, you've left your first love. morning and I don't know who I'm talking to but if you don't throw away your cell phone I'm not joking I'm dead serious if you have no prayer life get rid of it because it's taken all your time and if you still can't get a prayer life with the phone gone throw away your TV oh sister Twyla you're so radical oh no I'm not if we want results then we have to do something different. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. We're not going to get a different result until we fall on our knees, put our face to the ground, and cry unto the Lord. Save my family. Save my children. Save There's not enough prayer in the house. Ooh, okay, Lord. We are to make a difference. We have to become connected. Amen. If I take this light and I go over there to the outlet and I plug it in, it's going to turn on. If we become that house of prayer and we plug in where we're supposed to be, the power is going to start to surge. Amen. And we will be a house of prayer. And we will get results. Going the way we're going today is not going to cut it. You may think I'm mean this morning, and I'm not trying to be mean. But the Lord is coming, and he has his rewards with him. What have I done? What have you done to deserve the reward? Because we are accountable for the sin of omission as well.
well as the sin of commission. We are guilty if we don't do something as much as we do something. Love, lovest thou me? Do you remember when the Lord talked to Peter? Lovest thou me? Oh, oh, you know I love you. God knew something that Peter didn't know yet. You see, Peter was going to deny the Lord three times. This is the man that when Jesus was getting ready to leave the upper room and he washed the feet of his disciples, the man that helped found the church with him. And when he came to Peter, oh no, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. I'm going to wash yours. You're the master. And basically he was saying, I'm a nobody. Oh, well then you can't have part with me. Not, not my feet, but my hands and my head too. Yeah. yeah. You know what he did? He went and got plugged in. That's what he did. His house became a house of prayer. Later, he would go through quite a bit till he ends up upside down on the cross. He didn't want to die like the master. He wasn't worthy. And so he asked to be hung upside down. Hmm. He got it. He came in touch with the house of prayer. We have to come today in that mind. If we are going to make it. Is that all right? Amen. I'm telling you today, God is not concerned with the things of this world. Amen. Does the Bible ever say anywhere from Genesis to Revelation, my house shall be called the house of preaching? Now, don't get me wrong. We preach here. Don't we go to houses? I just finished a Bible study that's a long way from me. And it was so hard to finish because I've got my mom. While I'm here, I'm going to interject a little thing. I was with my mom last night. It was late. I have to go late. Anyway, explaining it, um, she didn't know me. It's the first time she's ever not known me. First time ever. She says, well, you look familiar. <laughs> I said, well, take a look again, Mom. <laughs> mom? Oh, wait a minute. I'm not your mom. <laughs> oh, you are my mom. I picked up the Bible and I began to read to her from the Psalms. I know you, you're Twyla. <laughs> the book of Psalms. It brings back the foundation of the house of prayer. When she hears the word, she becomes more lucid. I'm telling you, that is the truth. I can't explain it, but I'm telling you, it's the truth. And if I hold her hands and I say, let's pray. Yes, let's pray. We can be healed of our lethargy. We can be healed of laziness. We can be healed of complacency. We can be healed of a no-care attitude. We can be restored. Amen. We can be restored to the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. Amen. <laughs> I know, Brother Gary. <laughs> we can be restored. Jesus seems to say it is to be prayer. The aroma, <clears throat> my father, must be that of people opening their hearts to worship and supplication, Amen. beseeching him. Lord, whatever I've done, lay it not to my charge. Forgive me as I forgive others that have hurt me. Amen. And I ask this so that I can be a house of prayer. Amen. You don't pray when you have a grudge. Amen. And you don't pray when you're having a temper tantrum. Amen. 
Is that all right? When they get big enough, about two, look out. Yeah, they don't get their way and honey, they'll stomp and scream, fall in the floor. My brother's daughter was something else. She would have a tantrum and he was clueless what else to do for her. And her pediatrician said, walk away and just leave her there. Just let her have her fit. He said it took everything in him not to go and pick her up. But he didn't. She walks up. Dathan was at my mom's house when she was having this hissy fit. She walks up to Dathan. She says, okay, daddy, I'm done. <laughs> you think they don't know. How many times have you walked up and said, okay, daddy, I'm done. I want to do it my way. I want to do it my way. You see, my way is better. Human and fleshly thoughts do not replace the mind of God. They do not, and we do not do things righteously when we use human, human reasoning. Because human reasoning gets us in trouble. You may think you're Andy Williams and you can do it your way. But I'm telling you, my way is not the right way. His way is the right way. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's how it is. There's an aroma that comes with prayer. Even in the temple, there was incense going up. And there was a table of shoe bread. You know who ate that bread when it was done for the day? It was given to the priest. You see, the priest didn't get land. Preachers had it rough even back then. <laughs> um, they didn't get their share of, of a lot of things. But the church provided everything that they needed. But they had to be in there. We are the ministers of this world. We are the blood lineage that goes into the field. We are the ones that push away from the table and look out onto the fields that are white under harvest. But we don't run out in the middle of the harvest with a sickle and think we're going to conquer the whole field. You've got to get a hold of God in prayer. Amen. Do you want your kids saved? then you're going to have to pray more than one time a week Amen. if you want them saved. Is that all right? Amen. The Bible says that we are a house of prayer for all nations. I love the fact that people in here are from Jamaica, Nigeria, I forget where you die, Rom Romania? Yeah, okay. Puerto Rico, Cuban. <laughs> we come from every walk of life. But what do we have in common? We are everyone that has the Holy Ghost. We are the house of prayer. You tell Brother Remy I missed him this morning, sister. <laughs> okay. Have you ever noticed that Jesus... When he went into the garden to pray, he first, remember he was all God and all man. He said, let this cup pass from me. He knew it was going to be painful. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. The word again, Brother James, is surrender. Amen. Surrender. Letting go of my desire. Well, I want to do this and look like this and I want to do that. And, you know, we go on and on with the Lord without the surrender. What does it say about our churches today that God birthed the church in a prayer meeting? Before anything was born, the church was born in the upper room, wasn't it? Wasn't that the birthplace? Anybody, tell me what they were doing up there. They prayed until they were endued with power from on high. Now, if they'd have been sitting there with a sandwich from McDonald's 
or make Israel, who knows. And they weren't praying. Would the power have fallen like cloven tongues of fire? No. Because the Bible says that they were in one mind and one accord. And the, the fire fell just before it sat upon their heads. There was a sound. As a rushing, mighty wind. And it sat upon each of them. Cloven tongues like as a fire. And people said, are these men drunk? Oh, they can't be drunk. It's the third hour of the day. Or is it the yeah, third hour? I think that's six in the morning by the way they calculate it. It's too early to be drinking, unless you're an alcoholic, I guess. <laughs> but there was something marvelous happening. And out of that room, to this very moment, there is a church. And it has been passed from generation to generation to generation. My daughter looked at me. I have never heard anything like this in my life from her. And she said, Mom, when you die, after all the generations of preachers, it's going to die with you. I said, oh, no, it's not, my dear. If I have to drag you through high water, if I have to drag you through the mud, if I have to drag you, you are going to get saved. Amen. Oh, mom. Oh, daughter. I will do whatever it takes. And God spoke to my heart in such a specific way. He said, pray. I was in my sunroom. It's private, even though it has 14 windows, it's up there. It's up there, so it's private. And I'm praying at the top of my lungs, and who comes to join me but my oldest daughter. Amen. And she's crying, and she's praying in tongues. And she's crying, and she's praying in tongues. She looks at me, she says, I don't know why I'm crying. I said, because you're going to get saved if it kills me. <laughs> You're going to get saved. I raised you right. What are you doing? Returning to the vomit of this meager world that we live in. Where there's hate. Where the children are taught to hate. That is not the legacy of my children that received the Holy Ghost before they were nine and six. No. It's not the legacy it's not the legacy that you gave. It's not the legacy that you gave her. It's not the legacy that you gave them. We can have the victory, Sister Jean. Yeah. Amen. We can have the victory. Mark can sit beside you today. Amen. I'm telling you. intensity. you and be like because they don't know that side of you but I'm telling you we have the power Amen. we have the power Amen. you can complain about organization you can complain about everything if you want to but my dad was UPCI my grandfather and grandmother were UPCI 
I don't worship an organization, but I believe that doctrine. It's not a perfect vehicle, but it's the best vehicle we have at the moment. And we've become inclusive. Lord knows it's about time. We've been writing enough letters, right? We've been beseeching them enough. But it is time for you and I to change course. It's time for you and I to spend time in the house of prayer. God is going to answer. You know that whirlwind? You know that whirlwind? Before the tongues fell, it was swirling above them. The spirit of the Holy Ghost was moving. It moved in that upper room, 120. There's Jesus' mom. There's the disciples. And it's moving. And it came and it sat on let it sit, let it sit, let it sit. Lord, come and stay, come and stay. House of prayer, keep it going, burn it. Trim the, trim the wick when it needs it, but keep it burning. It is an eternal flame. You think Kennedy has an eternal flame? Let me tell you something. Jesus has an eternal flame that if we will keep it trimmed and burning, we will see great feats in the Holy Ghost for the Lord. We will see people healed. We will see the dead raised. He said greater things than this shall you do because I go to make intercession for you. Is he a liar? I say not. Is he an exaggerated? No. He is truth. He's the truth, the light, and the way. And he does it right. Woo! Oh, church, I feel him this morning. It's like a, a joy. It's a joy river. It is, and full of glory. Oh, full of glory. You know, there was a minister in our organization who had a young man walk in his door. And some of the people were worshiping loudly. And they didn't see the gun. And he kept walking toward the platform. And for whatever reason, the security, the ushers who would normally take care of something like that, Nobody could make it to the platform before he did. And he took the gun and he put it loudly on the pulpit. Well, you can imagine the weight of it. And he said, preacher, some girl asked me to church. That girl happened to be his daughter. She came down in the worst part of town and asked me to come to church. And I've been walking by here long before she asked me and thought about coming in. But today I'm here. And I'm tired of the life that I live. He belonged to a gang. And he said, I want out. I don't want to hurt anybody anymore. The pastor looked up and he asked everyone, that believed this man could change to come. And they all came and they laid hands on him. He prayed his prayer of repentance and the preacher said, I don't know when it happened. I don't know if it happened that second or it happened on his way home. He said, I just don't know. But he's a minister. He's a minister. And he lives for Jesus. And the way he used to be, he's not that way anymore. Amen. He's changed. We put off the old man and we put on the new. And we can do that this morning. I ask you this morning, if you are willing to make your house the house of prayer, I'm asking you to come for communion this morning. Would you come?
to be like him. We have to change. Brother Ralph, 